let's do spirit. Let's do spirit. Um, and I'm going to use the opportunity to show you how anatomy really counts in all this. Let me just check my... Do let me know in the chat how my voice is coming up because I know that we had some problems in the, with the <laughs> with the mic uh, a couple of days ago. Right, so I'm going to go and put the outline silhouette just so you all kind of see. We've been doing lots of quadrupeds in the in the um, in the training library anyway, but the horses are always a little bit different. But I'm going to kind of like break this guy down into kind of triangles although this is more like a square hair like this um so you can see how we kind of manage the complexity of of the horse horse's legs and those kind of things there are many ways to do horses um so first i'm going to just talk about shapes and then i'm going to go in and talk about anatomy okay so I'm just going to take this animation frame. What I like is he's really kind of condensed this thing and made it like really, really simple shapes. So now I'm going to talk to you about basic. Okay, so this is the basic aspect of the pose. Okay, so just from a basic shape point of view, we can see that we've got, let's just move this up a bit because he's a bit off the ground here. We can see we've got a triangle here. Okay, and in between this this negative space we've kind of got another kind of triangle here right and we, we're gonna come up right and I've got a square here like this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a triangle coming in here like this but really I'm gonna talk about you know you could come up and make a square shape like this here but and then we we're, we're gonna come up here and then in line with with this I'm gonna find his head okay so this is basically from a copying point of view okay it, it helps if you know the anatomy so you can copy it a lot easier okay that's where the tail's gonna go excuse me while i just one two three yeah <laughs> there we are right so um so what we have from a copying point of view is you can break it down into shapes like that now a little thing about horses, okay, is, is one way that you can really think about the horses. You've got the middle section here, you've got the hind kind of portion coming at the back here, and then you've got this front portion coming at the front here, and you often want to do something like, like this because this kind of comes back here like this, and you've got this, 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 and this, okay, and then the, the, the head kind of comes in here like this. Now, the front carriage here, which I'm going to draw in for you, okay, I'll just explain another kind of way to make it really, really simple, okay, I don't like to talk about shapes in this, I don't like, because this is a stiff way of drawing, but like, so if you think of like the deltoid portions, you can have like this kind of thing here, and then this kind of thing you can have for the hind portion at the back, okay. And then this is where you can kind of have, this is where the pelvis and the, the sacrum and the, the backbone goes and the, the head and the neck and everything is going to kind of fit in, in this portion here. You see how easy it, it all suddenly becomes when, when you think of it like that. And then you can have the muzzle here, okay? And then, you know, his eye and then this can cut in and come off. So you, you, this is just my own made-up horse constru construction. I am a bit of a, I wouldn't say an expert, but I do know my horses. I, I, some of you know about my horse anatomy sketchbook that I, I really studied the structure of the bones uh, and muscles. So in here, then you can think about making these like uh, straight lines because what happens here is you have these fetlocks which come here like this. Okay, so this is where the first bone is, the scapula is here, okay, and then you have the radius and ulna, and then you have this, this um, fetlock bone, okay, which comes here like that, or forelock or fetlock. To be honest, I've, I've actually forgotten some of the names of those bones because I haven't kept it up. You see, if you don't keep it up, but I remember all the structure you forget okay so which is why it's always important to keep it up then here you have the femur the patella 
uh, the tibia fused fibula and then you have here the again the the fetlock or the hawk or whatever you want to remember the word the hawk and this is the withers at the back and, and all of that so I, re I still remember a lot of stuff now that's a bit of a squat horse because i've kind of explained it to you but i could tweak it and then lean him and limber him up and pull it together but so this this simple form of construction is a good way as an animator even though like but if you know your shapes as i said you won't really draw like that but i feel as i'm teaching or sharing things with a bunch of beginners with all due respect of course um this is probably a good way of approaching it because an animator of james baxter's caliber okay if I would do it, then James Baxter would most certainly do it. Okay, he wouldn't. He wouldn't draw his horse like the way I just showed you. He might hint at it. He might like say if he wanted the horse to turn on its rear legs, he might just hint at something like this. Okay, with the rear legs, so the horse is coming up. He might hint at hint at that, and he might hint at the front legs like this kind of thing, or you know this and, and he might like have it turning its head he might hint with those things but he'll never rely on those things as as basically his his way or his formula of drawing a horse as i've said many times when you become of a higher level like a a true high level you throw away all that solid three-dimensional shape construction drawing that is absolute stiff rigidity yesterday somebody asked me how do you get life into your animation well you never you're never going to get life into your animation if you animate in boxes and squares like that but as i said it's those things those kind of things are important they're not to be cast aside they're to be used until you get to a certain point and then thrown away okay um, okay so I'm gonna do a bit of that because we're doing a drawing we're copying from the spirit model here and so to help you understand at home how to copy I'm going to employ employ some of those things that I shared with you so you can watch me do that to the spirit model okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is think about his front shape because i said so here's where his his deltoid and uh shoulder muscles are going to be here's where his pectoralis okay his chest muscle is going to be his transverse okay and then here's where his other big muscular deltoid and biceps and all those things are going to be in here like this so because of my knowledge of that remember how i've i've like the shape is this which I've told you okay which is what we have and then they don't have a sternocleidomastoid it's called a sternal something else which as I said there was a time I could tell you all the names uh, uh, by heart but I've forgotten the names of the horse muscles and bones I know what they are but I've forgotten the names okay because if you don't keep it up you, you use it or lose it you know and I have lost it I'll admit it so here we have his um his forearm okay which is going to be coming here like this and what we what baxter has done here is he's given him this nice little definition like that and now this is black uh, against the black of the background but I, I i feel confident enough to say it's going to be a shape like that okay so then we're going to have a, a shape like that for the joint and then another shape like that for the other joint which is going to be slightly offset okay, from one side to the other so we're just dealing with these simple shapes to get the complexity notice how this is all going to line up so i don't know if cameron allen davidson black is online but i've been teaching him to observe things like that so i'm gonna keep reminding him whenever i come across things like that so now we've got that now we're gonna think about the other one so what we have here which is that this is a transverse pectoralis transverse okay you got pectoralis ascendans which comes up p 
pectoralis transverse and pectoralis descendans, which comes down. So we can really see the anatomy at work here. So here, as as the as the as he's lifting the arm, okay. What I love about this hair is coming here. We're gonna come off there to see the elbow, like this, okay. And then over here we're gonna have so there's a bit of squash and stretch on that elbow as he's as that muscle's tensing, okay. This I'm gonna make a little bit thicker because he's a bit beefier than what I've made him. We'll tidy it up later. And then his sock, he's got half socks. Um, so these are going to come here. They're full socks, actually, not half socks. Socks are just the color of the of the leg. Um, so his comes here, which is going to be full sock. Half sock would be here. Um, and then we're going to have the um, other foot, okay? The coffin bone which is going to come there. So you see how we've broken up the front of the horse with that. And what I like about this, I'm just going to bring it up a bit, a bit off my rough. This is we've immediately got the neck muscle and the neck anatomy moving in there. I am going to lengthen his neck because I think I've, I've put it a little low. So we're going to bring his head a little higher later on. So hair now coming straight down, okay, is the horse's spine, the backbone. So remember how I said that you've got the, the middle section and the front section, okay. So now we're doing the middle section and then you'll have the back section like that. So that's how this is going to work here, okay. So we're going to come in here and this isn't drawn in, but I'm going to draw it in so it gives you a point of reference. So he's got his belly which comes underside here. This is really nice, okay? So we're going to continue this shape. So Spirit's a nice masculine horse, but I love the accuracy of the anatomy. You see, I was putting in a shape there, which was a graphic shape, but this is really getting that, even though he's a muscular horse, it's getting this nice round belly to show that actually there's a lot of ribs and the horse's abs are going to come here like this along here. What happens is it comes in and around then he'll have his latissimus dorsi which we have hair like this and then all his serratus and uh, his abs are gonna come there like that rectus abdominis and here we see the butt okay so remember how I said that the back could be considered a shape like that so here we see the butt in action going on here so you see how anatomy makes everything simple. Now notice how I made these legs straight like that, okay? Well, some of you who are in the Real Animator Training Library who are doing the dog lectures will know this trick. So basically we're going to br break off it. So we've got the thigh which comes here like this and he's got a bit of thigh muscle definition here, okay? And then we've got the femur here like this, okay? Um, Actually, yes, not the femur, the fused tibia and fibula. Then we've got the joint, okay? And then we're going to make this. So look how they ingeniously just, it's like an ingenious thing that you have like these kind of shape here kind of unifies, okay? Whether it's the front arm, okay? You can, and then you come out there like that. So whether it's the front arm or it's the rear leg okay you're kind of gonna have that same kind of unifying shape so it's it's nice to understand these simplify these graphic shapes but then the thing that makes them animate well in the hands of uh, an animation god like uh, James Baxter is because he understands the bone structure so he can squash and stretch those things very very nicely okay so we're gonna put this hair like this and now what I'm gonna do here okay is I'm going to have my other foot which is gonna be straight along here but we're gonna put a little bit of bending on here okay so we're gonna have a stretching kind of thigh hair like this and this okay and this is gonna stretch this way so what's happening is this is the knee and this is the femur bone okay so that's the way that's working and it's stretching behind and we're going to get some depth 
in here so this is gonna go nice and squash and stretch see what I was telling you about the squash and stretch and these legs are gonna be a lot closer together like this okay so we have our horse in perspective running really nicely like that which is all adding up to the anatomy now the tail actually the the sacrum would be here like this and the tail comes out there like that so which is why he's got the tail hair appropriately placed hair as opposed to putting it up here okay because again if you need to understand what the tailbone the coccyx is and where it sits and how it comes the tail is kind of broken up there like that so you see very easily i mean with with very little cleanup actually i don't think i'll bother cleaning this drawing of of spirit up it's um i'll just tidy it up like that it's kind of we've kind of gone through it quite cleanly with the shapes that's the thing about the the dreamworks drawings which is what i was telling charlene um, and it's not, as I said, I have to repeat myself, I'm not saying that it's weak because, I mean, in the right hands, it's actually the simplicity that makes you able to do e even better, more effective animation. But and, and, and to draw with these simple shapes takes a lot of skill to get a peel out of them. But it is very, very graphic and it makes managing the shapes a lot easier. Now, what I love about this head is we've got a square I'm going to do the head in a different color so I can explain the construction for you we've got a square just coming straight here okay like this so I'm gonna think of his head like a, just a square okay and then we're gonna come in like this and we're gonna have an eye here I'm gonna put another straight eye here I'm not even gonna attempt one two i'm not even i'm just gonna say okay on the other side of the square i'm gonna have to have a feel i'm just gonna purely have to have a feel so it's ingenious so the eyebrows are gonna come straight along here like this and actually you see because i draw horses in my own way and my horse designs that i do kind of were inspired by spirit but spirits is right at the top there so i was kind of falling back so this comes right at the top okay <laughs> right at the top right so we have this hair like this now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine this muzzle okay and it's in line with this and it's not as long as i would have thought it would be from you know again i'm drawing what i'm seeing rather than what i remember so i'm going to put this muzzle here like this okay and i'm going to bring that straight along there like that now what what this is very very simple um gonna have to show you this okay the skull of the horse okay comes across here like this okay and then there's the there's the nasal cavity here and all of the they've got these big incisors here I think four or two I can't remember and just the male have got canines and the women don't and then the what this represents is just the top and then the muzzle sits here and the jaw comes here like this and then you know all this is here so when you look at a horse basically um you're basically just seeing the front okay because here they have the nasolabialis and all that if i remember i can't quite remember which you know the cartilage comes like this okay over here okay and then the muzzle is going to sit at the bottom and then all of this okay sits in here and then you have a big kind of cheeks zygomatic around here okay then the eyes kind of come in here and then the parotrid gland and the ears sit at the top like this so they have all this anatomy that we have and they have the frontal scrupularis okay which is a little bit different which then comes up here as well um, so it's like a big shape here and more top side so when they break it down like this in this um, in the way we see it here it's really quite ingenious 
because all he's doing is he's just got a square hair and he's just breaking up the putting kind of like this mouth shape in here like this right and then on the hair he's just putting the the nose hair like this and that literally is your animal okay I'm gonna draw the head in properly but that literally and then from around here he's just joining joining it like this and then the ear comes up here like that okay so I'm gonna go and draw and the hair is really what makes it so he gets the hair out like this and he puts this kind of what we can do is, is we can break up the hair so he could say shape hair like this and I just am just copying because that's his breakup choice so that's literally okay uh, what what uh, what the head construction is I will draw over that head nicely so you can see it but if I would have just copied it because it's so simple in a box you would miss it okay you would miss it you just think oh the hair head is just a box it's just a square and that's what I was telling you about earlier about why if if it really was that easy to draw spirit stallion of the Cimarron then the animation we wouldn't be so impressed by the animation because we would say well anybody can can animate like that but no not anybody very few I mean it's this spirit I mean James Baxter's horse and spirit for me is his best work I personally um, I'm blown away by it like I'm blown away by a lot of his stuff but like a lot of people like to see his enchanted stuff which is amazing because they're they love the follow-through and overlap on on the dress and things like that now that is amazing and all that uh, but th that kind of secondary stuff is not going to it's not even secondary just follow through overlap and drag is it's, it's fiddly and complicated but it's not going to make seasoned animators go weak at the knees you know it's just gonna get a nod of head in like oh mm, uh, like approval but being able to manipulate a, a quadruped the way Baxter does in Stallion of the Cimarron um, is just mass everything he does I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the enchanted that's masterful too but I'm just saying that for me this his work in Stallion of the Cimarron is just otherworldly otherworldly it's just for me I put it up there with Bambi it is just otherworldly stuff so the muzzle comes around here like this out here and we're going to have the muzzle here so you see how we get a nice model construction and there's a little bit of just this kind of thing here and it's funny how Baxter characters all have these eyes uh, and they look like the Baxter eyes <laughs> you know you can tell when he does a piece of work as with all the greats because they there's something similar about the eyes in the eyes all his characters have that eye so this thing comes here like this and around here we've got the other side so we've got this thing on the other side here like this now the ear okay is going to just sit here and we're going to create a big kind of leaf shape okay and just go around it the other ear is obscured okay so the other ear is somewhat hair which even for me I feel like oh I don't want to put that ear there but it's right when I look at it like that it's right see I would have been flat which shows the difference okay <laughs> so I would have put my ear there and no it's right to put it there that's more three-dimensional so hair okay we're gonna go up and through and here I'm I can't pretend that I'm really giving you an insight I can talk about how he's kept the silhouette of the breakup pattern really nice but I'm just literally copying his breakup pattern here so there's not really I can't really pretend that I can really give you some insight into the construction of it or anything all I can say is is it's just a nice intuitive shape full of animating in relation to the reverse curve of the secondary action that we have there okay so here we can see is the spirit 
stallion of the Cimarron character horse running um, like that. So it has been an absolute pleasure for me to break that down for you. Um, I think, uh, let's just put it in black. Um, yeah, so it's simple, uh, but what you can do is you can really see it's an animator's drawing. Um, I, for one, I personally love animator's drawings uh, because, um, yeah, that's for me they're, they're the kind of drawings that speak to me they're the kind that's the way i draw i guess we all like what we do you know um it's not the flavor of the month people on instagram and all those kind of things they like digital painting but for me i like seeing my shapes i like seeing these kind of things so um amb is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for you know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library? <laughs>